I've been getting a few of these types of comments or um, messages, uh, questions from people that are watching me. This one specifically comes from Blonde E. Locks. Um, and she, she asked me, um, and I'm looking over here on my computer, she said uh, she wanted me to do a video update on what kinds of, of things and amounts that I'm eating lately, which I already did a video on that. I think it's from week nine and it's like uh, a typical day, but I can always do another one because it is changing as the weeks go by. Um, and she wanted some pointers so that she could jump start her scale. How do you deal with old food addictions and head hunger? And um, now I'm just going to take a look at what I wrote back to her. Um, and I wanted to, to talk to you all about this because it's kind of, uh, it's strange actually. So let's start with the first part. How do I deal with food addictions? Um, honestly, I don't know how I have dealt with them. I don't feel like I have any food addictions at this point. Um, I guess, you know, the surgery was such a big, big deal for me. It was like, you know, it's a big deal for everybody, but I don't know, and I, I'll never know how big it was for somebody else. I only know how it felt for me. And for me, it was like the biggest, scariest decision and thing that I ever did in my whole life. I mean, I was going into the hospital to have 80% of my stomach removed forever. And I didn't come to that decision lightly. That's the thing. It took me years of being miserable to get to the point that I was so ready to do this. Now, even um, just a year ago, I wasn't ready. And my girlfriend had had the surgery and it was very unappealing to me. Um, I mean, I wanted to be like her in terms of losing weight and being healthy, but you know, when I heard when I heard the restrictive diet that she had to go on before the surgery, I was like, "There's no way that I can do this." Um, then, when I heard that for a month after she was going to be on like a blended diet, I thought, "There's no way I can do this. I just don't have it in me." Um, and when I thought about what her lifestyle was going to be afterwards with not being able to eat like three or four slices of pizza, um, I said, I can't do this. And I couldn't. I couldn't have done it at that time. And it took me a whole year from when she had her surgery, a year and a half. No, I'm sorry. A little less than a year from when she had her surgery. She had hers in May of 2011 and I didn't make the decision to have mine until um, February, March of 2012. So it took me all that time to really think about this and make the decision. And then once I made the decision, it was made. Um, so the first thing is I was so ready to change my whole eating. I didn't want to have the capacity to eat that much anymore. I wanted to eat like a little bird. I looked at people that ate normal quantities and I was jealous of that. I wanted to eat normal quantities like that. I wanted not to have to um, eat before I went out to eat because I knew that like a regular size portion wouldn't be enough for me. So I'd have to eat a little something at home so that I didn't look like a huge pig when I went out for dinner. Um, I wanted to be able to buy something food wise and have it last, you know, buy a, a thing of dates or, or cherry tomatoes or cucumbers, even, you know, good food, but have it last more than a day. I just wanted it all so badly that now that I have it all, you know, all the things that I wished for, it's not even in my mind to, to be any different 
Do you know what I mean? Um, and then uh, she asked about the um, head hunger. Well, I guess I struggle with that because I don't. I do feel hunger, and it's frequent. Like I, I am more hungry now than I was before, um, for several reasons. The first is uh, with the sleeve because your stomach's like that big can't really eat very much at one time so it empties quickly and then an hour later I'm hungry it's not the same starving hunger that you are you know when you don't have this procedure um, but I still it feels like hunger so I do um, I don't graze throughout the day but I do eat you know a lot of little small meals um, maybe you could call it grazing. I don't know. I know you're not supposed to graze. Um, but whatever I'm doing seems to be working for me. I think when they refer to grazing, they're thinking more in terms of, well, let's say you ate 10 little crackers or chips or something, dipped in some hummus or dipped in a dip or, I don't know, whatever you dip pretzels or crackers in. And you, and you, let's say you had five, not even ten, five. And then an hour later when you were hungry again, you had five more. And then when you were hungry again, you had five more. So that you ended up having 15 crackers or 15 pretzels over the course of several hours. Um, I think that that's what they're considering grazing. So you could do the same with pizza. You could eat a slice of pizza and then... An hour later, eat another slice of pizza, and then a couple hours later, eat another. And before you know it, you've eaten a half a pizza throughout the whole day. I don't do that. First of all, I'm I'm very very clean with my eating, so I haven't had any rice, any flour, any bread, any potatoes, any sugar, um, for over three months. So I don't even crave that stuff. I mean. I have chocolate sitting here. It's right in the next room. Chocolate from Christmas. There are chips and salsa and dip and everything in my cupboard for Burke. There's um, a frozen quesadilla in my freezer. There was pizza here the other day for the kids that came over with and Burke's friends. There's um, ice cream in the refrigerator. And I won't touch any of it. It's like it's not my stuff to eat. And I look at, I mean, if I don't even look at that stuff anymore, but if you're asking me to look at it and decide why I'm not choosing it, I think it's because those things are like poison to me. They, uh, I'm allergic to them. They made me obese and fat and unhealthy. And... I just, I, I wouldn't even dare to go and eat them. Kind of like if, let's say you're allergic to nuts, and you know that if you eat nuts, you're going to go into an anaphylactic shock, and your throat is going to close up. You just, you don't even think, oh, nuts. Oh, I want, you don't concentrate on them and say, oh, I want the nuts, but I can't have the nuts because they'll make me sick. You just, you're like, they're, they're just not even in your head anymore. It's like Pavlov's dogs. Nuts equals danger. Nuts equals throat swelling and maybe dying. To me, all those foods, bread, bread is like terrifying to me. Like, I would never have bread. In fact, there was a slice of pizza left from Burke's and I was hungry at night and I took off all the cheese and some of the barbecue sauce and some of the chicken and I ate that. It was like this much stuff. So, um... So that's how I deal with head hunger. I don't really think I have head hunger. If I do have a little hunger out of boredom, um, I'll go get a cucumber and dip it in some salt, or I'll get some grape tomatoes and eat a few of those. Three little grape tomatoes satisfy me. They fill me up. One little, you know, uh, cucumber, what are they called? The, the mini cukes. Uh, that is big for me and it'll it fills me up so that I don't feel like I need anything I don't feel unsatisfied um, if I want something sweet I'm really into dates so 
the Majul dates. And those, um, you know, I was limiting myself to one, one little date a day, but I've been having more, um, maybe three at a time. And, uh, you know, they might be a little bit high on my glycemic index, um, but, but they're not, they don't have like sugar, as in sugar from, you know, unnatural sugar. They're just dates. And I really don't feel like you get fat on foods that come naturally from the earth, like dates and nuts and avocado and uh, olives. Those things are very, some of them are very high in calories and high in fat, but they're not going to make you fat. Um, but I do watch how many I eat of things, and I write everything down. Um, so I get satisfied very easily. Um, and there, you know, then there are just things that are just off limits, and I don't even think about it anymore. I hope I feel this way forever. I think this is, uh, you know, you have to work your mind and your brain to make it become just who you are. And if I see that in the future I start to slip, although I can't see how I would, but if I did, I'm going to catch it right away. And I'm going to say, oh, um, you know, I can't, I can't really have that. <clears throat> like with cheese, cheese is a huge weakness for me. So I do buy the little not the Laughing Cow, but the Baby Bell cheeses, um, and I'll have one or two of those a day. And I won't buy a block of cheese because cheese will get me in trouble. Um, I will graze on cheese. I just know that I can't have that in the house. That's a huge weakness for me is cheese. I think I just really have my head wrapped around this. I still have a long way to go to get to my desired goal. Um, and right now the exercising is a little bit on hold, but I'm not worried about it. I have other things that, um, I'm working on and that's getting in the water, as in drinking the water. Um, I've really, really been lax on that. And I like water. It's just, it's just what I have to put my mind to. I have put my mind to the foods that I won't eat and the foods that I will eat. So I need to put my mind to drinking the water. And pick, I have to picture, see, like your, mi your mind is a tool. And you can really be in control of your mind. So um, I'm going to picture all, all my cells just filling up with the water uh, and how much they need it and how good it is for all of my cells. That's what, what being conscious is all about and being aware. So, um, you know, if you want a piece of cheesecake, think of what the cheesecake is down to the very basic things of the cheesecake. It's picture the big cup of white sugar that you're going to pour into the mixing bowl. Picture the cheese, the cream cheese that's made out of like oils and lards and fat and nothing real because che cream cheese doesn't come from the earth. Um, picture that being put into the mixing bowl and then picture, you know, mixing all that together and how it make, it'll set up into like a gelatinous form. And if that cheesecake, if that piece of cheesecake was a person, what would it look like? To me, I think it would look like a really fat, jiggly old lady with gray hair and like a lady from the circus, like a freak show lady from the circus, all jiggly with cottage cheese dimpled legs. Do you know what I mean? So that's how I, you know, I would try and help you if you said, how do you avoid those things? Try and concentrate as hard as you can and think of what that food really is. And then think, do I want to put that in my box? So this is long, and I hope I didn't bore you, but I just wanted to try and convey 
um, how I feel, how I deal with food now, because it's so very different than how I dealt with it before. Um, and I hope I conveyed that to you. Um, I do have, you know, tremendous, I guess, willpower, if you want to call it that. I feel my resolve is is like 110%. You could put a piece of chocolate or whatever it is that I used to find tempting in front of my mouth, and I won't even take a nibble. I won't lick it. I won't bite it. Nothing. Nothing can make me eat that anymore. I don't want it. It's like putting liver in front of me. I don't want liver. I don't want a Hershey's kiss. It's the same thing. I feel the same exact way about it. It's like, ugh. But, you know, give me some quinoa, a piece of chicken, sushi, just the, just the fish. Um, and that'll really float my boat. So I hope that helped you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.